It is my pleasure and honor to introduce Yola Bastos. In this interview, Yola shares her story as she moved to another country where she didn't speak the language with her five-year-old daughter, then went from being an optimist to frustrated to depression and then found her way back out of that to now help other women find financial security. Welcome to Share.Care, an all-inclusive community sharing experience, strength, and hope to create strong, healthy, and inspiring relationships. Share.Care communities work toward every individual feeling safe, valued, and heard, free from the threat of danger, pain, or harm. Each episode, founder Damian Andrews explores the principles underpinning Share.Care and invites expert special guests to share their knowledge so you can easily reap the benefits so many others experience. You hold the choice to create your future. Let it be with strong, healthy, and inspiring relationships. Hello and welcome to the Shared.Care podcast. Our belief is that global peace starts at home. Feeling safe, valued and heard gives you the foundation to confidently step out and make the world a happier and safer place for everyone. Because in today's world, it's in your own selfish best interest to help others. Now, today we have Yola Bastos as our special guest. Now, Yola uh, is a Portuguese national living in London for the past 20 years. She's the co-founder of Women Flix, which empowers financial freedom for women worldwide, and the founder of Beautyfly Digital Studio, creating digital marketing that works and the host of the Entrepreneur Talks podcast, which brings together thought leaders who are disrupt oh, excuse me who are disrupting the status quo and she also works as a mindset coach plus she speaks three languages english portuguese and spanish welcome yola <laughs> <laughs> hello, 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 everyone. Thank you so much, Damien, for for inviting me. And yes, that's true. I have plus, plus, plus. That's <laughs> <laughs> quite amazing. And that's where I wanted to hear a bit about your background, if you wouldn't mind starting there. Like, you yeah. share some your background, the challenges you, that you faced leading you to do what you're doing now. So. Oh, I'm going to try <laughs> to bring my story in very <laughs> tiny things, tiny bits. But okay, so I live in UK for the last 20 years almost. So I decided to, to move. I'm going to start from here so you will understand <laughs> how, please. how my journey in UK. Because back in Portugal, I'm from Portugal. But um, like as you said, but there was a story there, but it will I will bring back <laughs> when I'm <laughs> while I'm talking about England. So I moved here with my daughter. She was five years old to you United Kingdom, and I was twenty three. So back in that time, I I came with the focus in just make money and go back my house my home because <laughs> I had. I had my I had my own apartment. I had a nice job, but I I asked my boss there that I need to go because during this this times was recession in Portugal, so everything was tidy because I was a single mom and by myself supporting myself. My daughter, I said no, was the last the last thing I thought about it. My mom just said, "Yola." Please, please go. And I said, okay, I'm going for four months, but I'm come back. I'm back. <laughs> I will be back. And then <laughs> when that happened, I came to the country. I started to work in the kitchen. Uh, one of my sisters, she she was working in a restaurant. So I, I washed dishes there. And I was like, um, okay, thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you. But this is not for me. <laughs> <laughs> I really appreciate the opportunity. I arrived straight away. I had job because this is very important. When we became important after a while, because I learned that the fact that you are immigrant, 
you yeah. get so sometimes you get banter vantages because you have family because you have friends and if you don't have anyone the the the, the, the movie is different yeah. <laughs> so great i'm so grateful because i had people that straight away could get me a job and then i i was there for 3 months i think and then i changed to cleaner on at the airport i still like and and the reason i jump into this works was because i didn't speak english wow. i couldn't speak english and i'm like hmm wow. How can no 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 I'm not gonna do this forever and I remember this is one of the persons that inspired me to continue. I remember walking cleaning the the um, at the airport and I spoke with the lady. She couldn't. She was my manager, some someone higher than me. And I said, "How long you been here?" And she said, uh, "She couldn't talk too much, but I understood like." She she's been working in that place cleaning for 20 years. I said, so you are a manager, a boss or something? She said, no, 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 I don't want that. I don't want that. I said, <laughs> and I remember that day until today because I said, no, I don't want to be like this. Yeah. I need to do something because where I'm coming from, from Portugal, I already had a, a status. I was, I was, well till the recession appeared in my life and i couldn't pay my bills properly my mom was helping me yeah. but it was a huge difference so when i arrived and i went into these jobs i met amazing people that are still my friends still today i'm grateful for the places but that lady i think i don't know i can't remember if it was the next week or the <laughs> the day after yeah. i went to school and i said i'm going to learn english <laughs> I yes. need to learn. <laughs> so I decided to learn, and because England gives you support, thank God. Yeah. Uh, I had the opportunity to leave these jobs and go for school. So yeah. I start my journey with entry three. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> so I was on entry three because you go to the school, you are adult, you need to do exams to find out what is your level of language, I, the, the English. So my level was none. I was on the... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm far above that. So. <laughs> I could I could really sing any songs because I love music, but I never understood what I'm singing. But <laughs> it's good that nowadays I know exactly the songs that I love I yeah. still listen to them and I said, ah, oh, maybe that's because the words are so strong, powerful, empowerment, <laughs> a lot of specific strengths in that songs. And I'm like, oh, maybe that's why I used to listen to this so much because the word in the music is so powerful and it's <laughs> nothing bad because <laughs> when I start to learn English, I said, oh, maybe I've been listening songs that I shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but you didn't know the language. But anyway, so I start my my English classes. I I passed that for a year. I can't remember, but I end up uh, doing higher diploma in. I got my levels on my, on English and maths, and I was able to do my first degree that I that I had done was travel and tourism, and yeah. then travel and tourism. Because I, as I said, I always, always, I always been passionate about music and dance. Because back in Portugal, I used to have a, a dance group. So I said, okay, I don't want to go travel and tourism because I love travel, but I don't want to go on to, to that road. I want to carry on. So I decided to do higher diploma in dance. So I became a, <laughs> a, dan a qualified dancer with merits and distinctions. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> and I'm 26. So 26. Yeah, it was 26. And yeah, three years after. So my life completely changed. And then I said to myself, okay, so it's another passion that you have, Yola, which is health. And I went for the, <laughs> for the degree for health, which was um, nursing. I started to do my access to nursing. And through this journey, um I always I always find myself very creative and very I like to I like new things, but it's not like changing all the time, but I like new things. If it's something that is 
that I love, I don't mind if I'm changing completely careers. Like right now I'm a mindset coach, but to become mindset coach, I've been <laughs> through this, everything that I said. So the health, um, when I have done my access to nursing, I didn't, I did not get inside the university because it was another season in England, like uh, they, they done something with the courses. So with a lot of people applying, I couldn't get it. So I went frust- uh, from very optimist to very frustrated. So I decided to go. And during my course, my teacher said, Yola, get a job as a healthcare." So conclusion. Instead of going to university for nursing, I became a healthcare assistant level five, which is a healthcare assistant that works with intensive care patients, with oh, wow. do bloods, do different type of things that I I just stopped this. I spent my 12 years, 14 years during doing nurse assistant. Um, before COVID, everything changed. Yeah. Oof, that's why I decided, I, I, I was feeling something. I was working in a hospital, which I love the hospital. I love to care about people. I really, it's, it's my, I'm passionate about it. I, it's like, but I said, hmm, something is not right. I start to feel like something was not right on the way I was re- being recognized. And yeah. one certain day, I sat down. This is a long story, right, Damien? Yeah. No, it's a great story. It's not- <laughs> <laughs> one day. <laughs> uh, we've all got a book in us, and I think we've all got, like, a big, big book in us when we get to the detail. Yeah. So one day I was sat, uh, sat, uh, sat down on my coach, yeah. and I play. I was quite, quite depressive. I was going through, I went to the doctor and I said, something is not right because I'm not that kind of person. So I recognized straight away. And she said, Yola, you're getting into a depression. So I decided, I sat down on my coach and I was watching and looking for something on, on YouTube. And I found one girl on YouTube and she, the title was, do you want to, Sorry, no, I can't remember properly, but it's like, do you want to change your life? And I start to watch that video. It was mm-hmm. maybe 25 minutes or so. Yeah. But after that video, after I watched that video, I made, I created a plan. Yeah. I changed completely. I opened a business. Uh, from that day, <laughs> I yeah. said, yes, <laughs> that's what I want. Why? Because I was not feeling happy at my workplace. Yeah. In terms of changes that happened there and then came COVID and because I didn't accept to get the vaccine, I was put it on the side as well. So that was complete my <laughs> assurance like okay, Yola, yes, move on, do your thing. And mm-hmm. that's when Women Flicks born. Because during the before before COVID uh, when I watched the, the video, I opened my first business, which is lashes and microblading. Yeah. It's based in, in beauty. But I said, I was, I'm, I'm happy with what I'm doing now because I still care about people. Yeah. I still do what I'm, I'm, I love, which is care about people. So with that said, when I come to the, to build like start women flicks was from a, from a training that one of my friends she participated and she shared with me and I said oh my god this is amazing it was yeah. about money financial um, learn about your finances as a woman and I said no she went for the for the training about finances and she shared with me and I said I've got idea yeah. We could do this. We could help a lot of people. <laughs> and we started. And we started Women Flicks. Uh, by the, my, my idea, I invited my, my best friend, my niece, and they are my partners till today. And it's been four years now, I think. Yes, we've been on, we've been on, this, on the road 
three. It's going to be four years now. Wow. Right. So I hope this can help. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, it's amazing. And that's why, I, I mean, if you don't mind, I wouldn't mind stepping back a little bit because you're talking and there's a number of things you touched on there because it sounds like a, it's been a bit of a, a roller coaster ride. But, I mean, it sounds like you were doing very well in Portugal um, and you had a daughter. I, I'm, you were a single mum, so um, there was some some background there that, you know, has led to, to you being a single mum, but uh, doing well. And then you say the recession hit and it's like all of a sudden you're not, uh, I'm guessing you didn't have the career that you had anymore. And your mum, you mentioned your mum was supporting you a little bit. And so as a single mum, you've decided um, to go to another country, and I'm assuming you didn't have, you know, lots of relatives and, and friends and things like that. How, how did you do that? I mean, how could you, you know, as a single mum, not having that, what what, what sort of conf- I mean, what gave you the confidence to do that um, or or was it out of necessity? What what drove you to, to take that step? It's a, it's a huge step and I'm just I'm sure the listener would like to know what drove you to do that when in a similar situation they, they find themselves. I don't, like know if, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you remember, I said, was the last, last, last option. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yes. I said that because in unthinkable would be unthinkable because, as I said in our conversation before we start, my yeah. dream was always to get into Australia. Don't right. take me to anywhere. My mom was like, "No, y'all, you need to go to close to your sisters in London." And I'm like, "The UK." I said, "No, I'm only going to Australia." <laughs> We've got kangaroos. <laughs> I had that in mind for so well fixed, and to break that was mm. very, very hard. It was really necessity. Like otherwise. Uh, uh, when I to give you an idea, let's say that um, during that time, uh, my wages was above the normal already. So I was earning well. Like, let's say that the the basic in Portugal was three hundred pounds, yeah. and I was already earning seven hundred. Mm-hmm. Uh, recession, like is happening right now <laughs> in everywhere in the in the world. I believe Australia is, is affected as well because Europe it is. But it's like everything. I couldn't pay. I pay my bills. I didn't have any debt. I but on the end of the month, my money dr- arrives on thirty. On third, yeah, I don't have money. I don't have money to eat. So my mom needs to come with the shopping. And right. that is making me crazy. Yeah. Because I have a daughter. I have to to feed my daughter. I have to pay the nun. I have to pay the, the school. I have to pay the transport. Everything by myself. Yeah. I would I I end up I always end up every month after every month without a penny. It's like basically three pounds. I would have on my account after three days because I'm paying my bills, everything. Yeah. And that's not a way of living. And no. I said, Mom, okay, you won. I'm going to go for four months. I make enough money because the money was different, pound mm. and euro. Yeah. So one month here would be like three months, like to put it back some money for I have some money. In, in the bank so I can eat. I don't, I don't need my mom because my mom as well is stretching herself. Yes. And she don't have just me. She have another three. And on the end of the day, mom is mom. But I, I don't see like my mom was supposed to do these things. Yeah. And I said, okay, I need to change. But um, yeah, that's when everything, I had to have the courage to move it was tough. It's very, very tough because after two months, Damien, I was missing even the stones from the street. Can you imagine? Um, <laughs> wow. Do you know the, the, the pathway where we walk? Yeah. I was missing that kind of design. The, yeah. Each, everything. Um, I end up not eating nor talking too much because I, I, was, I was a person that I, I was living with my mom, but I have friends. And mm. coming, change a, pro, a country. And then my daughter, 
uh, bring my daughter with me. But changing country was not that easy because I was already 23, 23 or 26. I'm now I'm confused. 23 years old. So yeah. I have a life there. <laughs> I left some friends and family and etc. So it was not easy because I end up in the hospital. Actually, I end up in the oh, hospital. Really? I was working in in a, while I was working in the kitchen. I I had like days like I didn't feel for it, and the kitchen going. I was washing dishes, but we have refrigerators, yeah. the fridge, the big fridge in the kitchen. So yeah. you need to go. Oh, can you go and grab a lettuce? Okay, yeah. yellow. Like, oh, can you grab a tomato? But yeah. I'm so, and I need to open that door, and it's summer. Yeah. And I got a, I got a, how we say, a flu in yeah. the summer. Yeah. But my body was so weak that I had to be, I had to go to hospital and stay there for three days because my mind and my, yeah, my body alone, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't work properly. I was unhappy. I was like, I want to go home. <laughs> and that made me weak. And the, the flu, I don't know how we call, but I got like, uh, do you know that wind? You open a door and you have a window open. and you so, just... yeah. so I had that. I had to be in the hospital for three days. But yeah, it was, it was tough. It was tough. But at the end, after that, what made me stay here was my daughter. Right. Because back at home. I was working. I leave home six o'clock in the morning. I come back seven, eight, no, nine p.m. in the evening. I work in a store called Massimo Dutti, yeah. and in another city. So I need to travel way back I, from home to there, to then vice versa. So every day I would see my daughter for ten minutes or fifteen minutes on the end of the day, wow. and that was killing me softly. So the thing that made me stay here really was when I look to my daughter and I can take her to the school, I can pick her up, I can go to school. I said, there is no price to see the shining bright eyes that she would have every single day because that made me to carry on here and say, I'm not gonna go back because I'm I'm having what I what I need there, yeah. and I couldn't I couldn't get and I was working hard hard and then I said okay let's stay, and yeah that's <laughs> that's my motherhood side. <laughs> so so that really yeah. sounds like you know from your perspective it was your daughter that gave you the courage to keep pushing forward even though I mean because that that sounds really like you really one didn't want to be there then got sick. Um, so yeah. was it your daughter that was she the, the the driver that gave you the courage to keep pushing forward? Yeah, she was five years old, six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely. I always because I always say this. I always share this uh, because it's really important. Was the important aspect of my staying because if I did not have a daughter, I guarantee you that I would go back yeah. the next day straight away. But when I realized the that I was receiving what I was dreaming while I was there because yeah. that was not a mother that I want to be leaving my house 6 a.m., taking my daughter to a nun, to her nun, um, and then coming back 9 p.m. and see mm -hmm. my daughter, she's sleeping. So what is my fun with my daughter? Here I could go take her, pick her up, go to play with her and my nephews. I end up being like <laughs> playing with with her and my neighbor's children because, but playing hard, like playing, really playing, go to the park, go to the, to the, the to the, to the, how we say, gardens and forests and yeah. swim and do uh, skate, do everything because I'm yeah. passionate about this kind of thing. So, <laughs> Climbing on trees. So I had this and I said, yes. Yeah. And the shine, the shine eyes that my daughter, every time I would take her, every time I would pick her up, 
was a day that I remember. So going to the school and the the school opens the doors and see that baby girl running to me with the bright eyes every single day. Yeah. I said, yeah, there is no price. I don't care. And uh, and on that times, Damien, I was living with less, less money right. because I'm not working anymore. I'm studying and I'm earning like 120 pounds per week. Right. But I was happy. Yes. I was living. I was living the dream. I was happy taking my daughter, studying, <laughs> putting her in school, sli- cycling with her. It's just, it was another game. It was another level. And that made me stay, made me yeah. stay. Definitely. I don't have another. And then slowly and smoothly, everything came to what I am now. Yeah. So from that perspective, I mean, obviously you, you had that, that time but you also you mentioned uh, you you wanted you didn't speak english to start with so you're in a country that speaks english you didn't speak english um so you've got a you've got to work you you're spending you want that and you've got the opportunity now to have that time with your daughter so you you you're making the most of that when she's awake by the sounds of it and sound you know and running through the forest and doing that stuff i i you know i've been a single Why, time, uh, and i relate to that <laughs> um and then you've done study. How did you like for, for the listeners? Ha- time management. I mean, how did you manage that? I mean, what did? Was there anything you did to organize that, or, or to? Because I mean, you've got one. I said I would imagine the work you were doing was quite exhausting. It wasn't. You know, you you, you had a, a physically exhausting job from a where you were working. Then you're running around with a child as well, which you know it does give you energy, and I get that. But then you've got to study. How did you? How did you time manage? I'm very good on that. Planning. <laughs> <laughs> Even back in the days, if I start, if I think about it, I'm good. I just find solutions because I remember, okay, I'm studying. I need to drop my daughter. For example, I need to drop my daughter eight, but I need to be in school 8.30. Yeah. So what I'm going to do, I'm buying a bike. Just bought a bike on car boot sale yeah. for I don't know, and we both running on bikes. So that it makes my trip, or even I drove. I always had this is another another side of my arrival in this country, but uh, another another things that happened. But I always been blessed, always always been blessed with mm. great people, even. From the day one I arrived here, I can't remember when was exactly, but just for you to have an idea, yeah. I had three times, I three cars. Yeah. That they were offered me, gifted. Oh, wow. That's wonderful. All the time, people blessing me. So I had that. I had my car. Yeah. Uh, but like I said, remember, 120 pounds, I could patrol, I could do everything. <laughs> I would go <laughs> to the cheapest b- b- um, shops where I can buy my my daughter's clothes and myself without yeah. shame, because this is what I can, I, I can afford. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to go in shopping on Prada when I don't have money for that. Yeah. So. <laughs> Because I know people does that. So that is what I'm calling planning. I'm not, I'm going to the market. I went to market. I went to sh- cheapest, uh, how we call charities. I done my best with the money that I had in my hands to be able to live and be happy. Never, ever I remember to have less food in my table. Never. Yeah. Yeah, I probably I can say that I was not living in the in the best place, like the best house, because I was on accommodations. Um, I I was in a, on a studio, and then I passed to a house which not was not my house. Um, but never ever I did not had a ceiling to sleep or or food on table. No. Yeah. But it's about planning, Damien, for sure. 
I want to tap into a point that you said there um, where you said, you know, you shopped without shame and you shopped within what was for you. I remember when I grew up, my my, my parents split up and we were with my mum and similar sort of thing. There was four children and we didn't have a lot of money and, and there was never any shame in what we could afford and living within those means. How much do you think, because you, you mentioned earlier to do with gratitude or, you know, being grateful for what you had. How much do you think that affected your ability to, you know, keep moving forward and and being happy with your time with your daughter? So much. So much. Because it brings you how I'm gonna explain. Um one of the most important things that we need to be caring with ourselves is our self-love and self-love and self-care comes from me inside right Mm -hmm. (laughs) not from others or from outside but um, being able to to do or to feel that way that i just mentioned uh, it makes you straight away happier because i remember one of one memory that i have from my daughter in portugal before we 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 des- before I decided to come to this country, I remember getting to a coffee a cafe, uh, yeah. and my daughter saw a sweet, and I didn't have that money. And I said, and she pointed and she asked me, and I said, I can't afford that. And that for me was like, <sighs> it, it it is hard when it's so simple, yeah. and you can't do that. But you can't do it not because you don't want or it's because you're greedy or because you it's because you don't have. <laughs> and then it's like <laughs> this needs to change. And then coming here, we still don't have, but we have other things, <laughs> simple things like sitting down on the grass in the park. Because I love sunshine. I love sun sunshine. That's why I want to go to Australia. I still want to go. <laughs> We're gonna have you. We're gonna give. We'll have a thing. You come out. You know, we will bring you here. So. I definitely believe me. I will. <laughs> but I want to come back to uh, London too. So <laughs> <laughs> we can swap. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but living, doing these small things, make me happier. Yeah. There is no. Yeah. Totally. Uh, we didn't have at the beginning, we didn't have that sweet or give that sweet to my daughter. But we did have time to stay together, to dance together, to play together and to look to the wind, like, to the sunshine. Small things like I said, wow, I'm now enjoying what I dream for. Because yeah. when I was, when I became a mom, <laughs> We all have a vision, right? Yep. <laughs> oh, I want to be I want to be a mom. I want to be doing this. Or I want to be a dad. I want to do this, this, that, that, that. Yeah. But then sometimes things are not exactly yeah. like we wish, right? <laughs> the road is a little bit different than we planned, correct? <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes it's like, oh my god. <laughs> uh, it, it happened only when she was from six years old, like because we came five. She was five, but she's straight away we came on april she's in december was six so from that time it happens only on when she was six years old but that is struggles that still struggles on the on the journey on our journey but it's different we were together so is that like because it sounds like you know, from and you mentioned you, you don't have, but we have other other things. Like and and you mentioned simple things like you know the wind blowing that that kind of thing. You know, and you also talked about earlier you, you're an optus, optimist. I was going to say optimist prime them, but <laughs> that's because <laughs> you trans- <laughs> you're an optimist. Uh, went to frustrated, went to depression, um, and then come back out of that. <clears throat> How mm-hmm. like from that perspective of your everyday where you know. Was this something that you did to, you know, when you look around and you see, you know, other people have stuff that you don't have, but then you've gone, well, I've got the wind. How do you make that choice to, to go, well, you know, I'm going to focus on what makes me feel good. Is that, you know, how, how did you make that choice? Experience. 
<laughs> life is beautiful. Depends yeah. how you. Life is always beautiful, but depends how you look to uh, look at it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's the way, because we all have the same sky. We yeah. all have the same flowers, the same different people, but we are all humans. Like, because from myself, if I walk outside, there is always people that pass through me, like his people that pass through you. Yeah. And there is a there is the the street. There is cars. There is clothes. So if we look to things in a different way, yeah. We choose, if you choose to be happy, you need to look to things in a different way. Yeah. Like the fact that I'm just sitting down and feeling the wind blowing in my face and appreciate that. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> you just do it. Try it. <laughs> and you just, it's like being here right now and appreciate the fact that we are having this conversation. Yeah. It's worth it. Than just thinking, oh, I have another meeting. Oh, uh, oh I, oh, uh, we need. Do uh, you understand? Like being, being, but not being. Like presence, the present. I read a book a few, few years ago that really helped me on this, which is the, um, the morning. Oops, no, I didn't prefer. That's me. Too many information. We'll the put it in the blog <laughs> for this podcast. No. The miracle morning. <laughs> the miracle morning. And it really did help me to, to choose my priorities uh, in terms of myself to be able to appreciate this kind of thing. Because yeah. when you when you use gratitude every day, yes. you think, example, if you do every single day, write down, I'm grateful for 10 things. You yeah. will become grateful for simple things like I'm grateful for my laptop, for my table, for my pen, for my phone, for my rubber, for the sky, or for the for my for my lipstick or for my tea. This is simple, but it's so important we be grateful for that. Yeah. I'm do you understand? So yeah. I know you understand, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. I'm, I'm <laughs> no, but you're right. You're so right because there's so many things that you you could be looking at that's missing out. But you're being grateful for those those simple things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is that what you know from that perspective? You, you know, because you operate now as a mindset coach. What you know from that transition of you know you've come come to to London. You you know gone through that feeling unwell and then you got to a stage where you're, you're having that great time with your daughter you've you started studying um what led to you you know being the mindset coach and, and tell us a bit about that please the mindset coach came i always loved psychology yeah. and i said i don't want to go for studies again not that I would do. Uh, no, I said no. Psychology to be well, you've a done psychologist. Done a lot of degrees. <laughs> <laughs> to be a psychologist, I'm gonna be like I don't know how many years I'm gonna be there <laughs> studying. Um, I always been connected with that. I always been mentoring people, leading people. Uh, I was part. I am part of a big. Nowadays, I consider myself more spiritual than uh, practical. How we say practical? No, not practical. But prosthet. Uh, can't remember the word. But I'm part of a church called Hillsong, yeah. and in that church, I had the again. I've been blessed to be able to to have good, 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 good leaders, great leaders. Amazing, amazing people that lead me as well into yeah. success. One part of my journey is built there inside, mm -hmm. where I was leading women. I was part of a huge amount of leaders where we have development, constant development, and I, and, and that made me made me think about or. or work more on my journey about 
my mindset coaching. So I decided based on everything that I, because I'm, I'm always thinking, I like to, I like to think, and I observe a lot of people, which my daughter keeps saying to me, mom, stop looking like that. But I'm not seeing how I'm looking. I'm just thinking I'm, (laughs) I pass through that image and I go further. But yes, and I used to have a lot of friends, Mm. people, no good with friends that would come to me with their problems. Right. When I was for many, many years with their problems and they talk, 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 and I talk back. Mm. Uh, I went to a point that I said, you know, I, I remember to switch that button. I just closed that door yeah. because I said, you know what? This is consuming. It was in a way that was consuming me. Right. Consuming because your problem would become my problem. And I'm like, yes, a lot of stuff going on. People is not, it's negative. And then they keep negative and I'm keep talking and they keep doing the same thing. I'm like, <laughs> yes. when yes. I went, I've never experienced went, people doing that. <laughs> I think so. I went, <laughs> when I went for my nursing course, my beginning access, I had psychology. Yeah. And remember till today, fraud words, um, don't keep doing the same thing again and again and expecting different results. Yep. And back that time, I said, okay, enough is enough. Because mm-hmm. I've been talking the same thing years and years to these <laughs> people. I said, no, 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 no. I need to do something. <laughs> so I stopped. I closed. Uh, I closed doors. And it was so beneficial. Yeah. Because I cleared my mind and gave opportunity to myself to embrace this. Yes. mindset getting to my course i said oh wow i love this yes this is exactly what i want to do yeah. and took the course was so touching the, the the spaces that i like to talk which is my mind mind uh, thoughts the conscious unconscious all these things and i'm like yes so yeah. that's why i decided because i always have uh, i always had this click for the for the mind but i was doing it in the wrong way yeah if i make sense because no, that makes it, complete sense and, and so, so you've taken you know you obviously were keen to help people and and but you were taking it on and that was draining you you took that time to shut out get centered yourself and then you've moved forward again um so and working as a mindset coach which also uh, from what i understand connects to to women flicks which is a, a power empowering financial freedom for women worldwide which i think is amazing that you're you're doing that um and I mean, that really taps into you know, three key principles when sh- within SHARE. One is responsibility, which sounds like from that mindset, you took that responsibility um, yourself. So you knew yourself that this is what you needed to do. And and for creating strong, healthy, inspiring relationships is having that financial freedom. How did how did you take that step into to, um, co-founding um, Women Flicks? What was the process that went through to that? And what was the inspiration for doing that? Was helping women in africa right we still we still we still fighting for that fighting is not the right word but we're still willing to do that yeah uh but i felt inspired by the women around me and then the other women that because my background is in gola right. and we are all from africa backgrounds and mm-hmm. We believe that is so many, so much potential there, yeah. and is a lot of poor, uh, like our countries, they are considered poor, and they are with a lot of poor people there. Mm-hmm. And I straight away thought about thought about yes, we can do something with women flicks where we're gonna work with women in Europe, helping them, yeah. but then all together we can help these women in these countries. Right. Because it is, women has a, such a powerful energy. Yeah. Uh, I always believe. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> can, be, can be switched to the wrong way. I'm not saying that the energy is always good for anyone. We do 
Well, carry so wield it. <laughs> yeah, we all do carry this energy. We all have this good energy, but women is is just sorry, Damien, but we are more powerful. I, I'm not, not, I can, I can. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a feminist thing. It's just the reality. And this is, I mean, and that's something that we want to be talking part of what share is about is is you know the equality thing. Well, it sounds like it's not an equal. Actually, you've got more power. <laughs> But it is about sharing. I mean, there is that power that you've got, and and um, uh, I think that should be shared. So and so, please don't don't be you know, <laughs> talk away. In, in a way, when I say we are powerful, because the way we talk, yes. the way we express ourselves, the way we give, yes, is different. That's yeah. right. Yes, I just heard something today. The a man, uh, uh, it's not a pastor, but it was a man. It's someone. He's an author. He writes books, and he was saying, "Should be ha- we should be having more women in the war, in the military, military, yeah. because if were there more women, there were no too many. Uh, they wouldn't allow men, their sons, leaving their homes to go and lose their lives." Because the empathy that yes. we carry, <laughs> yeah, no, the empathy is, yeah. And then we become, and the world would be more in peace because we are so empathetic. Like the, we use empathy and everything, so we would arrange a plan hmm. to not take anyone to fight for another each other, and would be perfect. Perfect, that I don't know, but we would be better. <laughs> No, but you're right. There is that empathy that because I know I have a negotiation course that I teach, and the best male negotiators um, operate from that female perspective of empathy and understanding the you know understanding what the other side wants and needs and finding that that um that connection. So that that empathy is very powerful, it's extremely powerful. So I completely agree with that. And from that, you know, so we we're talking about you empowering um, women or financial freedom for women worldwide which has led to um to women flicks and and i know you've got a um a, to run to another meeting so but do you want to tell us about what women flicks does so just the services that it offers um uh, yeah so, so if you could expand on that that'd be great so our um let's go i'm going to talk about mindset again <laughs> <laughs> Our mission is to change the mindset of women yeah. to have a better relationship with money. And then we use, um, through educational and courses and coaching. And what do we do with these women? We work, we either you go through the courses or you, or you have coaching with us. But our yeah. coach touch the three elements, like I said, mindset. So yeah. we is to change the mindset because everything starts in a mindset. Yeah. If you, if you want to anything, anything you want, you think. <laughs> so mm. that comes from here. So your mindset, your life, and your financial your finances. Yeah. They need to be built up rebuild build transform so that's the areas we work <laughs> because no matter what this is very i call them fundamentals yeah elements to build your financial freedom so we work with women on the fun the these three elements and bringing through courses or coaching yeah so is that through your um, through your website? Is that how to contact you? So you're running courses and coaching. Is it in person or online? How to how to? It is, depends. If you are in London, you are more than help welcome. Yeah. Uh, to work with me face to face. If you are in Portugal, because one of uh, myself and the other two founders, they are in Portugal. I am in the UK. They they can also work with women in Portugal because there is a lot of women that 
also speak Portuguese or, or English. They are based in, in, in Lisbon or other cities in, in Portugal. Mm. And then we run as well our coaching sessions on, online. Yeah. Um, we have, in, in terms of the courses, we right now our courses are closed. They right. is not available any of the courses because if you go to our website and you try to, they just a maintenance. So it needs to be changed a couple of things. I think so, just to note, sorry to, to interrupt there, but we're recording this now. It, this will air about a month later. So I'm assuming this will be all up then. Ah, mm, I, this will, this I will believe air on January. The, January from 2023. Okay, yes, yeah, understood. Yeah, so just after this goes to air. Yeah. Right. Good to remember that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So in terms of coaching, we we do also for companies, right? So group groups and individual. Yes. But wow. it's really to work yourself, your confidence, your mindset. Um, your way of looking, if I say in a simple, simple way, your way of looking to your own money, because sometimes people, I don't know about you, Damien, but how do you feel about money? What is your, when you think about money, what, what comes to your mind? Fun. <laughs> I buy Lego. <laughs> <laughs> I buy Lego. <laughs> But you see, some people think it's dirty. Some people think yeah. it's corrupt. Some people think it's no, I don't, don't have really. So these kind of beliefs, if we can say, they need to be transformed to for you to be able to be successful financially, because that is uh, is a lot yeah. of blockage, and and that's the but with simple things like being grateful. I'm just releasing one thing that is important <laughs> on this <laughs> video here today, but being yeah. great every day, you will see that you will start to manage your finances differently. Just that. That's an interesting <laughs> point. No, I haven't actually heard someone say that, like being grateful, you will manage your, your finances differently. Um, now, I, and I do know you, you have to run, so we'll, we'll wind, wind this up. But I, I would love to have, because I think we're just scratching the surface on this. So if we can um, <laughs> uh, organize a time to, to do a second part to this, I'd really love that. But before we go, uh, this question I always ask, and I guess is from your deepest wisdoms that you've got what would be some key things that you would share with the audience it doesn't have to be about money it can be anything just something what would be your deepest wisdom that you would or, or wisdoms that you would share with the audience <laughs> I, I didn't prep you for this so. <laughs> very very simple <laughs> Silence. <laughs> ah. It's important for you to be able to at least <laughs> to 10 minutes a day or something. Observe your be in silence, observe yourself and enjoy the rest. Enjoy the <laughs> enjoy the place, enjoy whatever you are, but silence. I just want to say silence because I've I've said so many things, but silence. <laughs> Yeah. And that's that's actually very powerful having that time to yourself. Yeah, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Yola, it, it has been I know you have to run so sorry for keeping you, thank but it has you. been so wonderful having you on the show. Um thank thank you very much for being part of it. Thank you so much, Damien. And yes, let's do the second cuz I love as well. I'm I'm afraid I have to go, but <laughs> I'm so sorry. But definitely for sure we can arrange can be very, very soon, so we don't miss this. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll, we'll, take we'll definitely. <laughs> you take care and all the best, and thank you so much for having me. Bye -bye. Thank you for being part of the Share.Care community and helping people around the world prosper. You're creating a bigger pie for everyone to share. The more people contributing to the world being a better place, the better the world becomes for others and for you.